the Coast Guard has been searching the Gulf of Mexico this morning for an Alabama woman who went overboard off a cruise ship. CBS News correspondent Susan Roberts has the latest. Susan, good morning. Maggie, good morning to you. The couple, married for 30 years, decided just a few weeks ago to take this cruise. Michelle Vilborg was celebrating. It was her 50th birthday and her very first Caribbean cruise. The carnival holiday set sail from Mobile, Alabama, Monday afternoon. Later that night, somewhere off the Florida coast, Michelle's husband awoke to find his wife gone. He woke up, the alarms were going off, and she wasn't in the room. The Coast Guard believes Vilborg went overboard about 70 miles off the coast of Pensacola. A crew member heard a splash, and they did a quick head count of everybody crew-wise and passenger-wise, found out that the subject was missing. Ironically, Vilborg's disappearance marks the third time in just three weeks that a Carnival passenger has gone overboard. Earlier this week, a 46-year-old man fell off a Carnival ship near the Tampa port. He was later found clinging to a buoy. But last May 24th, 18-year-old Bruce O'Crepe, on a graduation cruise with his parents along his chaperones, was seen going overboard 150 miles southwest of Tampa. His body was never found. One report lists more than 100 cruise ship passengers or crew have gone overboard since 2000, with just 20 of them rescued. Carnival Cruise Line is extending its condolences to the Vilborg family, saying they are in their thoughts and prayers. Maggie? CBS's Susan Roberts. Thanks, Susan. Joining us now, travel expert Peter Greenberg. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Maggie. Three people disappearing from cruise ships in less than three weeks. That is highly suspicious. If these people were victims of crimes, how difficult will it be, Peter, for investigators to prove? Well, evidence is always hard to find in these situations because there's, first of all, no central repository for data in these cases, although there's a bill pending in Congress right now to create such a, a, a system. But you know what? A number of cruise ships right now have at least 1,100 cameras. These are digital cameras going 24 hours a day, and they're time-coded. So they're going to go back right now, and they can actually put together a time-coded trail of every one of her movements uh, from the time she got on the ship until the time she possibly disappeared. Now, that may not give them all the information they need, but it's a good start. What else do you think, uh, ideally, these cruise ships should be equipped with? Well, you know, all the cruise ships today are boasting they all have balconies in the cabins. Mm -hmm. Carnival claims that it's almost impossible to fall off a cruise ship balcony because they claim their, their railings are about 44 inches high. So if somebody's going to fall off, usually alcohol is involved or they're dedicated to the act. In this particular incident, the woman fell overboard about 70 miles off the coast of Florida. In that case, who would take the lead in the investigation? Well, the initial search, of course, will be conducted by the U.S. Coast Guard, but it all gets down to where the ship is registered. In this case, the Carnival ship is registered in the Bahamas, so the ultimate report will be done by the Bahamian authorities. And I don't know about you, but I have not seen a show on TV lately called CSI Bahamas. So right. we'll have to wait and see. You know, a cynic might say a cruise ship is kind of the ideal place to commit a crime. These ships are in the middle of nowhere. It's very difficult for investigators to find evidence. What do you make of that? All the Although, you know, that was the case, but we've got a new cruise ship coming out at the end of this year called the Oasis of the Seas. It'll hold more than 6,000 people. They're going to have more than 2,000 cameras on that ship, not just cameras in every nook and cranny, forward and rear-facing infrared cameras along the sides of the ship so they can actually put together a very good timeline of who leaves and who leaves when. That is a good thing. Peter Greenberg, thank you. You got it.